Well, hello there. This is Mr. E's Mysteries and Magics. This channel is brought to you by RP Magic Shop, where illusion becomes reality. Check out the website below, free stuff to download, and if you live in the, in the United States, a $40 order gets you free shipping. All right, so what are we going to do in this particular video? Well, we're going to look at a magic effect that I've created that I call the Magic 8-Ball. Now you can see here, I, I don't have an 8-Ball. I have a deck of cards. So what does a Magic 8-Ball have to do with it? Well, first of all, I'm going to digress for just a brief moment because I don't know if the Magic 8-Ball toy is sold all over the world. I know people in America, of course, are going to know exactly what it is. Uh, I assume it's probably available in Europe. Pro I'm sure it's in Canada. It must be up there. Uh, Australia, I don't know. You know I do have uh, at least one subscriber in the Philippines that I'm aware of. I have no idea what's over there. But anyway, for those of you who do not know what a Magic 8-Ball is, it's a children's toy. And I, as you say, uh, as you see rather, uh, and like I said, I don't have one here, but I do have visual aids, okay? So this is what it looks like. Yes, it looks just like an eight ball from a billiards table or a pool table. Um, and that's exactly what it's meant to look like, of course. Although it is a little bit larger than your standard billiard ball. It's about, no, oh, I would say three times larger, maybe something along those lines. It's about the size of a grapefruit, maybe a smallish grapefruit. Uh, I do know it comes in different sizes, but the most common one is the one that's about, you know, so big around, just about the size of this piece of paper. You can kind of get an idea from, from my hand here. And it's made of this uh, polystyrene or styrene plastic, a much different plastic than the kind of material that's used in actual billiard balls. It's very breakable. It's really hollow inside for the most part. And what you do with this little uh, gizmo is you ask it a yes or no question. And while it looks like an 8-ball uh, on the outside, on the top, when you turn it over, it's got this little window in it. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see this in the light. The window isn't quite this large, but that's, that's the window that's in the bottom of this 8-ball-looking uh, toy. And this is a little triangular shape... Um, sign that gives you an answer. You ask it a yes or no question, you turn it upside down, and a second or two later an answer pops up on the bottom of the ball in this little window. This one happens to say, as I see it, yes. Okay, so you get yes answers, you get no answers, and you get, uh, you might possibly get uncertain answers. Uh, the iconic and classic one is reply hazy, try again later. So so that's what it is. It's a, it's a little kid's toy, and um, and that's what this card trick is sort of based on. I call it the magic eight ball effect. Now, what does the eight ball have to do with it? Well, uh, I'm going to say too, before we get started, there is a little bit of edginess to this particular effect. So uh, it may not quite be for everyone. Uh, you may not like it. It does get great effect. Uh, reactions when I do it, but you've got to do it under the right circumstances because there is a part of it that you, when you get to it, can make people just just a tad bit nervous, and uh, and it all comes out okay in the end, and and you'll see how. So anyway, um, what I do is I tell people, okay, so um, we're going to turn this deck of cards into a magic eight ball. Of course, I say to them, you all know what the magic eight ball toy is, and they'll say yes, and I say, okay, we're going to turn this deck of cards into something like. The magic eight ball and what we're going to do is a little bit later we're going to ask this deck a question and it's going to bring to the top of the deck the card that it feels will depict the correct answer okay and then of course at this point they say, well how can I you know they're thinking this how can a card depict a yes or no uh, question the fact of the matter is it won't be a yes or no question but that's we're not telling them that that's just between you and me okay so they're they're wondering what, you know what we're talking about how can we ask a deck of cards a question and a you know a card comes to the top with an answer that doesn't seem to make sense at first so so anyway that's what you tell them that uh, we're going to turn this into a sort of a magic eight ball ask it a question a card will come to the top that will give us the deck's answer not my answer the deck's answer uh, i'd like two volunteers please now i will tell you Again, I'm stepping out of character here for just a moment. I normally do this in bars, 
And what I look for there is uh, a couple of young ladies because it works very well with them. Um, I'm not going to get into it here. I'll get into it more in the tutorial, but this is adaptable to almost any circumstance. But the way I normally do it is in a bar, and I usually ask for a couple of young lady volunteers. Uh, and if I don't get one, I, I kind of, you know, rush and volunteer someone. I say, would you, would you join us? Why don't, how about you? How, and, and you, okay? So let's say we have, uh, we have two uh, volunteers here, and we'll call them... Uh, young lady number one and young lady number two and I ask them their names and they, they will tell me uh, young lady number one and you know my first name is young lady number two blah de blah and I say great what we're gonna do is and sometimes I will actually shuffle the cards a little bit real quickly and say to them okay so what we're gonna do is uh, young lady number one I'm going to riffle the cards like this and just like this and you are going to tell me to stop anywhere you want and uh, and that will be a card. The card that is on the top will be your card. And they will say, okay, stop. And you give them the card. Now at this point, at this point, they're looking at the card. And it's okay if they do. But you tell them, all right, I don't want to see the card. So make sure I don't see it. But go ahead and show it to everybody else. And please, no one say anything. And make sure you do show it to young lady number two. And everybody has seen it. And then I say, okay, young lady number two, uh, we're going to have you do... Uh, something similar, but we're, we're going to have you pick a card in a different manner. I want you to cut a little bit of the way down into the deck, maybe a quarter to a third, anywhere you want, just about that far down, and then turn it over and put it back on top of the deck. Okay, now, cut it again further down into the deck than that, and then do the same thing. Take it, flip it over, and, tr and put it back on top of the deck. Now, since I don't want to know what your card is, the first face down card that we come to will be your card. So there it is. That is your card there. That's the first face down card. Again, do not show it to me. Make sure you show it to young lady number one and to anyone else who is looking. Blah de blah de blah de blah. And uh, okay, has everybody seen it? Okay, now please, ladies, put the cards back anywhere in the deck that you want. And then they can just have a free choice of where they want to put the cards. And you hold the cards like this so that they're not being obscured by something like that. You just hold them out in the open. And you say, now, you just put the cards in the deck, but the problem is, this deck is not yet magic. Do you know what the most magical thing in the world is? Because we have to do something to this deck to turn it magic. And we have to use the most magical thing in the world to do that. What is the most magical thing in the world? Do you know? Every once in a while, you'll get some clown in the back yelling out, A FREE BEER! And when something like that happens, you just say, Very good, sir. That is the second most magical thing in the world, but it is not the first most magical thing in the world. And when everybody says, No, we don't know what it is. The most magical thing in the world is the kiss of a beautiful woman. So, uh, young lady number two, you picked the card second, so you would you please throw... I, the first kiss at this deck of cards to turn it into a magical deck and then you know she does the thing and you do you can do a couple of different things here uh, I like to just pretend it gets you know boom like that once in a while if I can see that the crowd is in a, is in a silly mood I'll, I'll instead of doing that to the cards I'll, I'll buck my head back a little bit and put my hand up to my cheek and say oh young lady number two I am so flattered but really we need to do the the magic here, not not on me, but thank you, I really appreciate it. And of course, that kind of gets a big laugh, and everybody, you know, chuckles at you and thinks, you know, what an idiot you are, but that's part of the course. Anyway, uh, have her blow the kiss, and you do the thing, and then you turn young lady number one, if you would, please. Okay, and then they do you do the same thing like that. And uh, I said, okay, now I can feel, I can really feel the magic. Now again, I, I kind of went like this, I, you probably shouldn't, just kind of maybe rub the deck a little bit like this so that they can see that you're not manipulating any of the cards and uh, you can see yeah I can definitely feel some magic happening here it is now time to ask the question now you've put your cards in the middle of the deck so for sure your cards are not on top that is not your card is it young lady number one no of course it's not because it's inside here and that's not your card either right Excellent. Okay, so we know what card's on top. Here's the question. But I don't want there to be any hard feelings. 
So whoever's card comes up to the top as the answer, I want that person in the spirit of sportsmanship to please buy a drink for whoever's card doesn't come up. Okay, and I just like to point out as well that the magician does this for free and doesn't get paid. So if you're in the mood to buy drinks, uh, the magician would not object to you buying him a drink too. But that's optional. Don't worry about that. Are you ready, ladies? Okay, we are now about to ask the deck the question. And here is the question. Oh, magic deck, based on the kisses of those two young ladies... Which of the two do you think is the prettier? Okay, now here, that's where things get a little edgy. Um, you, you never know what kind of reaction you get. Sometimes the crowd and the girls, the, uh, the, your spectators, just laugh at it. Sometimes they kind of gasp a little. Sometimes they, ooh, uh, you know, this kind of, you never know what kind of reaction you're going to get there. But it's okay. It doesn't matter what reaction you get. Um, you don't generally get violent or nasty reactions but it does get it does get a little edgy okay because it's a little nervous all right Who, who's going to come out on top and so you ask that question they get you, you get your reaction when it dies down you say ladies if you would each please take a corner of the top card okay and they each take a corner and i can feel now that the card the deck has brought a card to the top and it's going to tell us the answer so please take a corner of the card each of you and slide it off and hold it down, face down on the table. Okay. Now, when I say three, please lift the card and turn it over together. One, two, three. Boom. And it's this one. Okay. You see that? And when that happens, of course, everybody starts laughing. And when the laughter kind of dies down a little bit, you say, well, how about that? The deck says you're both equally lovely, and I certainly have to agree. And by the way, that cancels out your drink for each other. But if you want to go have these on the beer for the magician, I drink Guinness. Okay. And again, everybody laughs. Everybody has a great time. Uh, I've done this effect, I, I don't know, maybe a couple of dozen times and everybody loves it, and I've actually gotten, I think, three beers out of it. Two of them were from the two young ladies who were participants. They did split uh, the cost and buy me uh, a pint of Guinness. And one time, honest to gosh, everybody had kind of disappeared, and some guy came up from the bag and said, That was such a good trick, Mr. E. I'm going to buy you your Guinness. And, and he bought me a Guinness because he just enjoyed the trick and so on. So that's, that's it. That is the magic eight ball effect. The tutorial will be coming up very shortly. In the meantime, I hope you liked it. And I hope that if you decide to do it, that whenever you do it, you always leave them baffled.